Hey, what's up guys? Good to do another knife review. What we're looking at today is the Cold Steel Kudo knife. Very interesting clasp knife. Uh, it mimics the original South African Okapi knife, uh, which I do have, and I'll compare them to each other towards the end of the video. But anyway, let's talk about some specs real quick. Just go through the motions here. Um, this is a, uh, I would say, a large folding knife. Uh, closed here is five and three quarter inches long. Uh, the blade is four and one quarter inches long, making it ten inches on the nose when it's open. A nice shiny blade on there, so hold on a second, let me remove those fingerprints that are going to bug everyone. Um, anyway, here we go, a little better. Uh, handle material here is a Zytel, and it's a solid piece of Zytel. There's no liners or anything, it's, it's actually a pretty light knife, 2.4 ounces overall. The blade is a full flat ground Krupp 4116 stainless steel blade. Um, it's got the Kudo silhouette there as well as the name. The Kudo obviously is an antelope type animal uh, from Africa. And what I think is pretty cool is that the, actually let me show you the original here, the Okapi. You can see the Okapis have an inlay in the wood handle and uh, Cold Steel went with the, the Kudo style horn. If you look real close, that's how their horns look. But they went with the inlay being basically a kudo horn, which is a nice little touch as far as design is concerned. Um, super lightweight, extremely slick, um, which I think is, in this case, it's a bad thing. I mean, if you're into jimping and grip and texture and all that stuff, you're not gonna like this one. It's pretty slick. Um, the Zytel has a wood grain pattern in it. You can see there. But um, although it's, you know, it, it's grippier than if it was smooth, it's not super grippy. And of course, if you have it in this, this type of uh, grip here, which most people probably use their knives, the clasp on the back here, locking mechanism, is extremely smooth. It's literally just super smooth stainless steel. So uh, if you're not, if you're in, like I said, if you're a jimping person <laughs> or grip or any, any that kind of stuff, you're not going to like this one. Um, I think it's totally fine. In fact, if you're going to use this knife a little bit on the harder uh spectrum of things and you know you have to use it for a kind of tough job I would go with this grip here just to be extra secure but anyway it's nowhere here or there not a big deal um, super cheap knives uh, the original concept behind this knife is that the original Okapi which is right here which is widely available in South Africa as well as other places now um, it's 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 a cheap knife it's like Africa's knife you know like every country has kind of their their claim to fame uh, Switzerland has a Swiss Army knife. Um, Sweden has the Mora. Um, you know, uh, South Africa has the Okapi, <laughs> or Africa in general. It originated in South Africa, but then was actually traded up uh, in Northern Africa later. But anyway, there's a lot of different uh, different regions around the world that have kind of their their knife. You know, it's just kind of known to be their knife. Uh, Philippines have the Bell Song, obviously, not necessarily invented there but uh, they certainly adopted it more than anywhere else around the world. But my point is, is that Cold Steel, or Lynn Thompson in, in particular, the owner, uh, he looked at the Okapi knife and said, you know what, I like that knife, uh, let's make a better version of the knife. And that's what they attempted to do. Basically, they upgraded the knife by using Zytel instead of wood. Uh, they also went with a uh, adjustable pivot screw, which I think is a nice touch, because these, these knives generally have uh, play in them, because obviously this one's just pinned. But just due to the design, they're not super, they don't have a super tight lockup. You can see there's a torque screw there, which is a nice little uh, upgrade to this traditional knife. Now, if you're a traditionalist, you're going to say, yeah, well, I like the wood one. I don't want a newer version of it. It's an old style knife. Well, it's just preference. Um, I think it's a cool knife. Uh, I don't, it's not my first choice for a user knife. I mean, there's just thousands of knives out there. I think it's a great knife to throw in a tackle box, um, keep in a junk drawer, maybe keep in your car. But nonetheless, it's, it's still it's very functional. Just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's not good. It will definitely work for probably most of what you have to use a knife for. So anyway, if you're not familiar with the clasp knife, this is how it works. You can see there's a big old um, split ring hanging here, and it looks kind of like a grenade pin. <laughs> but um, this is what's uh, used to assist in pulling the clasp out to uh, unlock the blade. Basically, on the back of the blade here, on the tang, there's a notch that's cut into it. And you can see that notch just lines up with the, uh, the cutout, the um, rectangular cutout in the, the uh, clasp here. So obviously when it's in the open position, it just kind of locks in place like that. 
Um, there is a little up and down play. It's very minor. If I grab the original here, it's the same thing. It's just do the design. It's kind of a, a rude uh, or crude design. It's not extremely precise. Uh, but I don't think it's a big deal. In actually using this to cut stuff, I haven't noticed, uh, you know, a lot of slop or anything. As far as side to side, uh, nothing in the cold steel one. As opposed to the original, which there's just a little bit. But with use, it does loosen up and there's nothing you can do to change that. So it is a nice addition to have added the, the pivot screw. But anyway, what you want to do for this, uh, to unlock this, is pull back on this, okay, on the clasp. You can see that bends out. Now there is quite a bit of force because there's a pin here and this is what it pivots on. But if you're pulling this end and it pivots here, this end has to go forward. But because the handle is right there, it's not going anywhere. So it creates a lot of resistance. Uh, some people have a hard time closing these. With the ring, it's not, it's not a big deal at all. Basically, you pull this out just enough to free the blade. Use another finger, thumb, or some people use their middle finger and then you use their pointer finger to move the blade. Just move it a tiny bit just so it knocks off that axis. This way now you can move your hand, move your grip, because you don't want to be covering that blade channel. Now you can go ahead and close it, okay? These have a very distinct click, 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 snap when they open because there's a series of notches cut out in the tang. Hopefully you can see that. So hopefully you heard that as well. I'll do it one more time for you. And uh, I don't, this is just going to be my assumption. I don't know this for sure. I would assume those notches, the purpose of that is that when you're closing the knife, it gives you a little bit more resistance so you have enough time to remove your hand from the channel before you close it. This way you don't cut yourself. Just my assumption. Um, anyway, uh, I have, uh, in the past, I've had an original one. I don't know if I already said this, but I had an original one where the ring uh, actually broke off. It was cheap. The split ring on these originals are... It's a pretty cheesy one. It's not a, I mean, most of, for the most part, it's not going to break on you, but I have had one that actually pulled out, bent out, and broke. Um, they do use kind of a beefier one. It's kind of a squared off as opposed to the round style. But anyway, um, if this snaps off on you, or if you take this off, I'll tell you right now, it's extremely hard um, to, once this blade's locked to unlock it. In fact, on my old one that I had, I had to use a pair of pliers to, uh, to unlock the blade. Um, I don't like it obviously flopping around. Most people don't. It's cumbersome. It makes noise when it's in your pocket. It's it's not, you know, it's not ideal. Um, but that's just how it is. <laughs> that's just how it works. Um, if you wanted to uh, to pick these up, you're going to pay less than $9 because the full retail on these are $8.99. And that's the best news about it. It's just a cheap, affordable knife that can pump out. Um, in fact, if you're going to probably end up paying more if you find the original O copy. It's not that it's any better, it just happens to be original. But Lynn's idea behind this whole thing is that, and he even said in the video, he made a video on this uh, on the website, and he said, well, we thought we can make it better, and we thought we can make it cheaper. He likes the design, he thinks it's cool, it's a very traditional uh, type of knife. A lot of different uh, places around the world had a clasped uh, style knife, it goes back many, many years. But anyway, they just thought this was a better version of it. I personally li I like the original, just because it's the original. It is what it is, uh, but this is still a very cool knife, nonetheless. Uh, if this is something that you'd like to actually use, you are better off with the uh, the newer version here by Cold Steel because, uh, you know, I've never personally had a wood handle break, although I have seen them broken, but that's just going to be about abuse. If you use your knives properly, you're probably not going to have a break on you. Um, anyway, it's a pretty cool knife. It's interesting. It's super cheap. It's got a funky lock me uh, mechanism. Something different. Some people are going to absolutely hate this. Some people are going to like it because it is unique. Just be careful when you're closing these guys because they can be a little temperamental. And I think some people, what they do is when they go to close this, they don't pull this hard enough and they start pushing that blade really hard. And then when they do release the tension, it slams closed. So just be careful. Um, it's really simple to do once you get a hang of it. But anyway, that's my review of the Cold Steel Kudo. The Kudo uh, is actually the animal that's on the blade there. It's an antelope type animal. And of course the original Okapi is an Okapi, which is another animal in South Africa, or Africa in general. And the Okapi is actually a very cool animal. It's kind of like a horse with uh, a deer face and zebra legs. So if you ever get a chance, Google it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day.